I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We're going to dive right in. Uh, Mr. Hansen, I believe, has an, a proposed amendment. We are, by the way, we are still in uh, Article 8 in, our, in Section C, if you have the list of motions. Hello? Hello? Is that on now? Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Just to repeat, as you probably know, we're in the middle of Article 8, and we're in Section C, if you have the list of motions. And Mr. Hansen, I believe, is about to make propose an amendment. Oh, I hope excuse me one second. Mr. Mr. Lash, I'd like to make a comment first. like what's behind you. Thank you. And furthermore, <laughs> all it is is there was a little confusion last time about some of the language going on up here about letters. On the back side of the thing was the actual motion, which you all got the first night, but I can understand that it would have been lost since then. There's a list of A, B, C, D, different parts of this article. So when the moderator and, and others were sometimes referring to a letter, that's what they were talking about, and it was hard to follow that maybe. And then the other was a sense of where we are, which is what's behind me. So there's some copies up back if you didn't receive that. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Well, I, we have some more up here. Mr. Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jeff Hansen, Precinct 7. Uh, moved that the town vote to amend the proposed zoning bylaw, Section 5.3.1, Table of Uses, to require issuance of a special permit by the Community Planning and Development Commission for all other agricultural uses within Business A, Business B, Business C, Industrial Planned Unit Development I, and Planned Unit Development B districts by deleting the word yes from the corresponding cells and replacing it with SPP. Okay, do we have a copy of that? I'm looking through my pile of notes. Is this, do we have a copy of this? Okay, thank you. Just one second. I may, I may have it. I'm sorry if I... Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Discussion, Mr. Hansen? No? Do you have any discussion? Oh, thank you very much. No? Is there further discussion on that? Make sure you Point all have order. a copy. Point of order? Is it possible to actually see the change up there? Yes. This is 5-3-1, 5.3.1. Thank you. Is that the change up there? Just one second. Okay. Any further discussion, Mr. Hansen? Uh, no, Mr. Moderator. I'm representing somebody who's uh, making this motion who could not be here this evening. I see. Okay. Is there further discussion on that proposed amendment? None appearing. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Ms. O'Neill. Mary Ellen O'Neill, Precinct 4. Um, does this address Mr. Moran's concern with the bees and the chickens? Ms. Delios. Um, what this is doing is this is going back to the table of uses and just making an adjustment where it says yes to now um, have it be by special permit. It's called, the line is called other agricultural. Okay. So the, uh, the issue that you're bringing up, I think has to do with where we, maybe where we ended um, on Monday. And that has to do with some concerns that were expressed about backyard agricultural use. Mm -hmm. And um, when you go back to the definition of what agricultural use is in the definition section two, it clearly states for commercial only. 
So okay, it would not so have any impact that. on the average home keeper of bees or chickens or anything else. This is commercial. So it would so, be a commercial okay. agricultural use only is this special permit. So we don't need to do anything more tonight in terms of our discussion the other night to protect people's rights to have the bees and the chickens? No, we don't. Okay. It doesn't even affect them. Okay, thank you. Further discussion on that amendment? Yes. Mr. Herrick? Yeah, Steve Herrick, uh, Precinct 8. I'm just curious, uh, the motivation behind this particular amendment, it appears to create a little bit of a higher bar, I'm thinking, for this kind of use. Is that the intent of this, or is there something else going on? I wonder what the, I'm just trying to understand the motivation. I'm not for or against it necessarily. I just, somebody proposed it for a reason, I'm guessing, right? Mr. Meares? Well, you may, you may recall that I actually proposed it at the meeting last Monday. I'm talking because to the perfect I said, gentleman right here. Because I said that sentence that we were discussing having to do with agriculture contradicts the table. So either we need to change the sentence or we need to change the table. And the uh, uh, wisdom of the uh, uh, motion maker was to change the table. Got it. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Donnelly Moran. Charles Stanley Moran. Uh, can we address other uh, issues regarding the table, or did you want to just discuss this one motion? Right now, this motion is on the floor. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor of the proposed amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. Further amendments under this section C? Further discussion? Mr. Hansen, do you have another one? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Jeff Hansen, Precinct 7. Uh, my second amendment moved that the town vote to amend the proposed zoning bylaw by revising section 5.6.4 as follows. And I'll just read the first paragraph. Uh, agricultural uses, special permit for certain agricultural uses. No agricultural use shall be permitted on a parcel of land less than five acres or on a parcel of land less than two acres if the sale of products produced thereon generates less than $1,000 per acre based on gross sales dollars without a special permit from the Community Planning and Development Commission, CPDC. The CPDC may grant a special permit in accordance with section 4.3 of the zoning bylaw if the following criteria have been satisfied. I'll stop there. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? None. Yes. Mr. Doxer. Mark Doxer, Precinct, Precinct 1. Sorry. Um, it would be helpful for me, I suspect for other people also, if you could just kind of describe why these are changed. Is this just switching the order around because they were backward? Mr. Meares? Yes. Further discussion? None appear. Yes. Mr. Sasso. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Sasso, Precinct 2. Um, can you just go back to that paragraph that you had up there? Um, just a question, and it came up in something else I reviewed earlier, so um, this may answer two questions. So this uh, section four point, the last sentence, CPDC may grant special permanent coins with section 4.3. So 4.3 is CPDC powers, but 4.4 is SPGA. So should it be 4.3 or Mr. Meares.
You're right. Should be four four. Okay. Um, can I make a friendly uh, amendment to add, make that change to four four on that as well? Is that acceptable to the mover of the motion? Absolutely. It, thank is you. there any uh, objection? Not appearing. We will consider that part of the original okay. motion. I, I have another place where that showed up, but I'll I'll bring that up later. Okay. Further discussion. Um, could uh, Mr. Sasso, one last question. The town clerk hasn't exactly got the spot. Oh, maybe. We, we really can't see that, so we're asking for your help. Oh, we've got it over here. Never mind. <laughs> Is it right here? We, okay. Yeah. Got it. yeah, we got thank it. You. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, let's see. Are we ready for a vote on that proposed amendment? And no further discussion? All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Motion carries. Further business under the C section? Yes, uh, Ms. Toomey. Nancy Toomey, Precinct 3. I'd like to move uh, and make an amendment to Section 5.5.1.F. Uh, this is accessory building or structure. I'd like to add the words at the bottom where it says nearest rear uh, lot line to nearest side or rear lot line. Actually, what's up there is not quite right. This is F. You have E. All right. This, um, that you, did you, you change it around? You yeah. proposed yes. F. Yes, I did. And it was submitted to me, and I said, actually, what she really wants is an amendment to E. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. So. <laughs> Whatever you say is fine. What we want to do is we want to make sure that it's five feet. So let me read this to make sure. Because um, what I'm thinking is that we want it to be at the rear of the property. So what you're saying here is that I think we have to also do F is what you're saying is that uh, we can put non garages as close as five feet on the side. And is that what we really want to do be between the house as I see it? The side yard is between the house and the property, correct? Okay, thanks. The side yard runs all the way to the back. To the back? Yes. So the required side yard runs to the back? Yes. Does the rear yard run from property line to property line behind the house? Mm -hmm. yes. Right. So if you look at the language in F, it says five feet from the nearest side or rear lot line. It doesn't talk about required side yard. Mm -hmm. So I think what I was intending is that anything behind the house could be as close as five feet. But I'm not sure that what I intended was that somebody could put a shed next to their house within this required side yard, five feet. Okay, so I'm sorry. I added to your to everyone's confusion. Yeah, right. Let's go let's let's stick with your language, which is unfortunately not up on the screen. Right. <laughs> um, hmm, can you pull up that section? It's really a simple change. Five point five point one F point F. That's right. So at the bottom, if you see, or the, at the end of F, let's read it. It says, no accessory building or structure may be located within a required rear yard except for a building accessory to a one- or two-family dwelling or accessory to any permitted principal use located in a residence district, provided, however, that such accessory building or structure shall not occupy more than 25% of the required rear yard and shall be located at least 10 feet from the principal building and five feet from the nearest side or rear lot line. 
She doesn't talk about required side. It talks about rear or side lot line. Does that get us what we want? That gets us back to where we were in the bylaws previously, where we were able to put sheds five feet from the side and five feet from the back when it's behind the house. So right after nearest, it should sit side or rear. In F. There you go. Nearest side or rear. And that actually is exactly the same language as is in the current bylaw. There you go. Is, is there a second to that motion? Okay. That Ms. Demi? My intention is that this should address the letter that we all received regarding sheds. I just want to confirm that am I reading this the way it should be or have I made a mistake in, in how this would be? I think my intent is to, again, allow garage accessories or, or shed accessories to be able to be behind the principal building and be as close as five feet as it is right now. Ms. That's Demi? my intent. Mr. Meares? This matches your intent. Very good. That's my, that's what I'm okay. hoping. So we, this should And I'm sorry for the confusion. I, I didn't quite get your intent. Yeah. And I said this paragraph isn't dealing with side yards, it's dealing with rear yards. Right. So let's put it, let's change the paragraph that deals with side yards. Right. But th this matches, now that you have explained your intent, this matches it. Excellent. Okay, thank you. I hope everybody will support this. This will solve that problem that we got letters on. Thank you. Further discussion on this proposed amendment? Mr. Tuttle. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Dave Tuttle of Precinct 3. I am in favor of the amendment with perhaps uh, a variation. As written, there is no limit on the size of an accessory building which is not identified as a garage. I believe that we should have an upper limit on the footprint and or height of the, the, such an accessory structure which is within the uh, five feet of, of one of the property lines. Typically, in a lot of other uh, towns, the size limitation is about 120 square feet with a height limitation of eight or 10 feet. You know, a typical backyard shed. Further discussion? None of, yes, Mr. Schubert. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Rick Schubert, Precinct 7. Uh, to the previous speaker, I wonder if he has suggestions for uh, some of the footprint limitations he'd like to put in this because I think that might be worthwhile discussing. Mr. Tuttle, did you have any suggestion for a recommended maximum on the height or the footprint? Could you use the microphone? I'm sorry. Thank you. Dave Tuttle again. Uh, I would suggest a footprint limit of 120 square feet and uh, perhaps a uh, height limit of 10 feet. Uh, somebody might talk me into 12 feet, but. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to add that wherever it would apply so that we can have some framework without, like Mr. Tuttle expressed, unlimited size of accessory structures. Okay. Do you have some wording for us to vote on? Say again? Do you have some exact wording for us to? Uh... Mr. Tuttle's. Uh, 120, 120 square feet and 10 feet uh, maximum height. Mr. Moderator? Uh, one second, Mr. Meares. Okay, so as currently drafted, there is a limitation on accessory buildings in residence districts. It's in B, okay? And it's 600 square feet. <laughs> Doesn't have a height. Uh, a has, A already limits everything, uh, accessory buildings to one story. So 
Mr. Moderator, I think one of the questions now that we have, now that we have the side yard introduced to the uh, bylaw, it now creates an opportunity for a structure that may be, in many cases, too big for the side yard, where that 600 square feet might work in the rear yard. Then with some of the, some of its application, I'm interested in having some sort of restriction on the side yard, which is typically smaller than the rear yard. And do you want this to be applicable everywhere or just in the ad residence districts? The, I think in, as we were modifying F, um, I, that's what sort of brought it to my attention, so I thought it might be relevant to connect it to that somehow, whether it's in Section F or if it, uh, I, I suspect it would make better sense to have it in with Section F, you know, where we can at the end, uh, if, if it does in fact lie in a side yard, then there might be a smaller restriction on the maximum size rather than the one that's stated in Section B where you have a typically a larger area if it's going to end up in the backyard, rear yard. So maybe as a suggestion of wording then, uh, if we go to back to Section F, at the end, uh, semicolon and state, if if accessory structure is in the side is located in the side yard, additionally, it can be no greater than 120 have no greater than 120 square foot footprint, or a maximum height of 10 feet. All right, let us type that out. Uh, 120 square feet, yes. Okay. So 120 I'm, square I'm, feet I'm, I'm, and okay. 10 feet maximum height. So after lot line where, it's, where you have your semicolon, you want to say, and provided further, further that any uh, accessory building or structure, so get rid of if, but. We have a point of order. This would be an amendment to your motion, which we would vote on before we take your motion. accessory building or structure. Right. Located, so get rid of this. Located in the required side yard shall not be greater than 120 square feet. Uh, so I'm not. Can I see what B says? Shall, shall, shall not have a footprint larger than 120 square feet. Another point of order? Yes? Well, the plan, the plan was to make this an amendment to the proposed amendment, but you would vote on separately. But they were tying it together. As it, he, they were saying they would be in favor of it with that. So we will take that as an amendment to the amendment, which you can 
vote up or down, and then we would go back to the original amendment, either amended or not. Or a height greater than 10 feet. I will allow uh, discussion on both of these, though, where it's, it's all one package. Okay. Um, and the other thing that you need to do is in, in paragraph E, at, right at the beginning of paragraph E, you're going to have to say, accept it as specified in paragraph F. Okay. Yes, I think that captures the, the intent. Is there a second to that? Okay. Discussion is open on both of these. Mr. Moderator, if I could just follow up. I think one of the things that um, my intention is here with the side yard introduction, a lot of our uh, residential lots by their nonconformity are smaller than, uh, they're rather small. So by introducing the capacity to put uh, an accessory structure in a side yard, I'd be interested in having some limitation on the side, whereas if you go to some of the larger lots, it may not be an issue, but in the smaller lots it is. And if it's not in the back or the rear yard, then I think it's worth considering limiting the size of uh, structure in the side. Thank you. Further discussion? Ms. Toomey. I, I just want to, um, I think, try and explain what this amendment to my amendment is going to do. It, it says clearly, if you, if you read this section um, in B, that, um, I think it's B, that it can't be more than, that accessory buildings, if I can get this correct, I, I wasn't anticipating this other amendment, so I have to look at this again. But what we've done already in this section is limit to anything within a required side yard, and I think there's some confusion as to what's required and what is a rear yard and what is a side yard. Um, so a required yard is what the bylaws restrict you to. So it's a 15-foot setback on the side yard. We have allowed in this section a garage accessory structure, and only a garage accessory structure, within a required side yard to be as close as 10 feet from the property line but that's only next to a house or a residence. Once you get behind the house, that's when things change, and a detached garage right now, for example, can be as close as five feet from a property line on the side and five feet from the property line on the back, as can sheds, any accessory structure as it's currently stated. So when they reorganized this whole section, it got very confusing and it started to limit the size of a garage, the, where it can be located, where it can be. So uh, with a lot of reformatting, we managed to get this bylaw back to where it is now, uh, with the ex exception that anything within a required side yard can only be a single story structure. So right, as, right away, it limits it not to a two story structure, to anything that has any, anything that's high next to a house. That makes sense. It also, has limited the size of that structure to a typical two-car garage, which is around 600 square feet. 24 by 24 is sort of the standard out there for a two-car garage. Um, there was a height limit at one point, and it just doesn't work. You're going to get these very flat roofs, which are just not part of the New England sort of aesthetics. That's an architect talking. What this new amendment has done, what I was trying to do was get it back to the point where you could put a, a accessory structure five feet from the property line just as it is and as the previous speaker spoke spoke about we do have very small lots here so for some people the only chance of getting a garage is to be able to put it five feet from the property line um, the protection is that now instead of these two-story structures you can only have a single story structure so that was another way to kind of bring down the height of some of these structures this new amendment as I can tell is now going to put us back to not being able to put anything within the side yard again, um, 
I'm not sure that it accomplishes what we want. A 10-foot height structure, you can't even get in, let alone get a roof on. 120 square feet is only, uh, is very small. Uh, you can buy those at Home Depot and put them up. So I'm not sure that this amendment accomplishes anything other than complicating the entire bylaw once again. So I would sincerely hope that people will vote down this amendment and consider just allowing us to go back to where we are currently. Thank you. Further discussion, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Morton, Phil Brown, Precinct 8. Would the maker of the 120 square feet consider 128? That's four sheets of plywood. <laughs> nope. We don't have any response. Further discussion? None appearing. Are we ready? Oh, we have one in the back, yes. Hi, I'm Lauren Dom, Precinct 6. I'd just like to echo what Nancy Toomey said. A lot of us have very small yards, and it's very um, unfortunate that we're thinking about limiting people's property when it's the back of their yard. A lot of the fence, a lot of the lots are fenced in with vegetation, at least ours is, and the idea of limiting um, what we do in the future is just very, very upsetting to me. So I'd like you to consider that. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. D'Addario. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, under Dario Precinct 6. Uh, the only question I have is, by limiting the, uh, uh, putting a 120 square foot minimum or, or maximum on a structure on a side yard, what if the person had a very large side yard, you know, rather than a small one? What if they had, what if the side yard was really, you know, almost like what might be considered a front yard, they had an awful lot, a, a large side lot. Would that be limiting to them on that 120 square feet? Mr. Meares? So that's why it refers to the required side yard. The required side yard is um, determined by the uh, dimensional tables that we haven't gotten to yet. But um, uh, for example, if, if it requires uh, a side yard of 25 feet. They're talking about that first 25 feet from the side of, not the entire side yard all the way up to the building, but just that 25 foot um, uh, space uh, on the side of the property. Further discussion? Yes. Oh, okay, sure. Mr. D'Addario. Uh, just to say, so you're talking about that that structure only pertains to the 25 feet, and if they have additional a length of their side yard, they could do other things? Is that, is that what you mean? The answer was yes. Okay. Um, down here, yes. Doug Webb, Precinct 1. I am for Nancy Toomey's uh, amendment and against the amendment to the amendment. I think that's much too restrictive on people's rear side yards and uh, there's many properties in Reading that if they're going to get a one car garage or something on their property that's and be able to drive into it then it's going to need to be within five feet of their property line. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Arena. Uh, just to amplify Mr. Daddario and others, um, putting a fixed 120 square foot maximum on every property in town is guaranteed to fit no one. And so if this is to go forward at a minimum, my suggestion would be to make it somehow tied to the area of the lot as a whole so that there's some proportionality to the size of the building permitted and the size of the underlying property on which it's built. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Tuttle? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I don't remember who is the actual proponent of the amendment to the amendment, but I think that 
I would like to withdraw the amendment to the amendment. It was, uh, Mr. Schubert was the person that made the amendment. <laughs> Further discussion? Not appearing. We will first vote on the amendment to the amendment, which adds the words and provided further and goes on from there. And it also adds a section up in section E. So first we're voting on the amendment to the amendment. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Any further discussion on that? The, the original amendment as unchanged. Not appearing. All those in favor of the amendment, which adds the words side or in front of the word rear. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And that motion carries. Uh, further business under Section C. Uh, Mr. Donnelly Moran. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I propose a, uh, an amendment to the table of uses for resident districts. Okay, continue. In the other uses section, insert other non-commercial agriculture use in a box directly under the entry for other agriculture use. And the words yes would be inserted in all of the boxes for the different residence districts. Okay, hold on until we can yep. find it. Not business residents. Yes, other non-commercial agriculture use. Uh, Mr. Meares, uh, just one second, Mr. Donnelly Moran. Mr. Meares, did you have a comment? Okay, that, um, that's a contradiction in terms. The term agricultural use is defined to only include commercial. So there's no such thing as non-commercial agricultural use. So unless you want to change the definition of agriculture to include it, it, um, it you, the, you are, you've got a term up here that has no meaning. So how would you suggest coming up with a word that I is suggest, not agriculture, but... I, I, well, I, mean, I, don't know what you're, I don't know what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, I am trying to let anyone who is looking at the zoning bylaws to clearly know that it is commercial agriculture that is, uh, would require going to get a special permit. Uh, and that if we, I, I mean, we could change the definition of agriculture to commercial agriculture so that, you know, anybody uh, can look at the chart and see, oh, you know, I want chickens, I want bees, I want a large garden. Well, that's not commercial. Uh, so, you, so are you suggesting that instead of using the word agricultural use and defining it to be commercial, that you would like the word, the, the term to be commercial agricultural use? Uh, yes, uh, that would be good. I was thinking it might be simpler just to add a little box, but uh, if you're not that, opposed to... Um, it'll take a bit to find every place where it's used, but that certainly could be done to change the... So your motion would be to... Uh, change everywhere the word agricultural... agriculture use mm -hmm. is... appears everywhere in the bylaw, it should be changed to say commercial agriculture use. Yes. Okay. Is that... Uh, All right, a lot of places. Okay, I will uh, accept your motion. We'll explain exactly what's happening, though. Is there a second to that motion? Yes, Mr. Donnelly Moran. Okay, uh, so the purpose of this is so that you know a, a homeowner 
uh, who's interested in getting uh, chickens, bees, or whatever other agricultural uses are, and they have non-commercial uh, interest in, in doing this. Uh, they're not going to be selling their you know, chickens or their eggs or anything. Uh, that they can look at the table of uses uh, and clearly know that this is allowed because it's, you know, people think of agriculture as involving chickens and hens and all sorts of other things. They don't necessarily think to look at the definition. And I would point out that it felt like we talked about agriculture for an hour on Monday and nobody come, came up and pointed out, hey, Charlie, you know, we're talking about commercial agriculture. Uh, and so if none of us noticed it, none of the town uh, uh, employees noticed it, you know, then, you know, some homeowner is going to look at the chart and say, oh, you know, uh, if it just says agriculture and, you know, I got to get a special permit, oh, I'm not going to do that. Um, while if it's clearly commercial agriculture, then people are going to say, hey, you know, Six hens, that's not commercial. Thank you. Further discussion? I thought I saw a hand, no. Further dis Mr. Downing? Uh, Jack Downing <clears throat> from Precinct 7. Um, my review of what happened on Monday is that we did not choose to regulate <laughs> under this zoning thing. People who keep uh, bees and rabbits and whatever uh, uh, under this, this bylaw. Is that, that what, is what I believe the intent was. The intent was only to include this for commercial uh, agricultural use. Is, is that correct? Uh, so, so, so people who keep rabbits and chickens and bees or whatever just for fun or for pets, they, they don't have to go through this process. Is that the intent? Mr. Meares. Okay, so first of all, the, um, the amendment that involved the bees and the, uh, that was defeated. So I can't say what the intent, uh, the intent was. I'm sorry I haven't been as clear as apparently as I need to be, but I, I do believe that uh, the definition of agricultural use, we went over it, it does clearly say it's commercial. Right. So, um, if you take all, every place where that word appears and change, you, you can if you keep the definition exactly it is, and you want to change agriculture use to say commercial agriculture use, it won't have any substantive change in the bylaw. So, it won't, it won't change the meaning or anything. If you believe that makes it clearer, that's fine. No, I just wanted to understand the intent, and I, I think we're all in agreement. So, Chuck, I'm not sure we, we need to specifically say in here the, the commercial and the non-commercial agriculture, people who want to keep rabbits and chickens, they just do what they do and, and they won't be regulated by this. That, that's the way I read it. Yeah, I see a hand right. Okay, Mr. Berman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Barry Berman, Precinct 4. Can I just ask a, a question? Um, under the current zoning that we have right now, um, Mr. Donnelly, Donnelly Moran keeping the chickens and the bees on his property, did that require a special permit? Um, did he need something from the Board of Health? Is he in violation of our current zoning? Ms. Delios. All of that is regulated by the Board of Health. Nothing to do with zoning. So if the intent here, and I, I certainly don't begrudge Mr. Donald Moran for keeping his chickens and his bees. I certainly don't live next door to him. I might have a different opinion of that. But since I'm assuming no one complained who lived next door. Otherwise, um, we wouldn't be talking about this. But um, if, if that's the case where it's, not, where it's not even a part of the zoning, why are we even talking about it? If the intent, and I think everybody here would agree, um, notwithstanding neighborhood concerns that keeping chickens and bees and you know rabbits or whatever, no one has a problem with it. Why are we even fiddling with the zoning? I think we should just leave it alone, keep the keep the agricultural definition as it is, and people uh, who want to keep the animals on their property would be regulated by the health, and we don't even need to deal with it with the zoning. 
Ms. Miller. Ms. Can I just add one more thing? Sure. The, we have had a lot of communication back and forth with the Board of Health, and there is a representative here tonight. Um, there are six licenses that the Board of Health has issued for this use for residential homeowners to, to have this kind of uh, chickens and bees and the like. So it's a very small number, and we have no commercial agricultural use. So therefore, so we have one tree farm. So if the Board of Health is regulating it um, through their regulations, does it need to even be in the zoning? And it's not. So, okay. So my recommendation is anybody have uh, amendments to this on agriculture, we should just leave it alone and let the folks who want their chickens have their chickens. Thank you. Mr. Mayors. I'm sorry. I'm told that I'm still not clear. So let's try it again. We have a blanket rule that accessory uses are permitted if they're accessory to a permitted use. So if you have a house, we don't have to write that you can have a lawn. We don't have to write that you can have a vegetable garden. We don't have to write that you can have a swing set. All of those things are recognized accessory uses because they are customarily, customarily incidental to the permitted use, a home. So um, having a dog run around in your backyard is, again, a permitted accessory use. And I would say the same happens as chickens and bunnies and bees. All of those things would be regarded as customarily incidental. You don't have to talk about them at all. They're just permitted. There's no permit required. Everything is fine. Where you get into, the, the reason we got into this is because the state requires us to specifically say that agricultural uses that are protected by the state, which are only commercial agricultural uses, we have to say those are permitted by right. And that left a little gap, which is the ones that are not protected by the state, the little ones, oddly enough, the little ones that are not protected by the state, the recommendation was to make those by special permit. And we're talking about so what we're talking about is farms that are less than five acres or less than, uh, or less than two acres or less than five acres if they make um, uh, less than $1,000. But they have to make something to be commercial. So if you're keeping your, your eggs, you're, you're keeping your chickens and you're selling your eggs, you're commercial. If you're um, keeping your bees and you're selling your honey, you're commercial. But if you're just, you know, having the eggs for yourself, you're not commercial, it's just customarily incidental, it's not mentioned anywhere in the, in the zoning bylaw, and um, it's not a problem. Point of information, Mr. D'Addario, please use the microphone. Point of order. We have a point of order. Could the gentleman please use the microphone? Ron Dario, Precinct 6. I just wanted to add, when you said uh, involving commerce or money, would that would there be as long as it was under a thousand dollars? Mr. Mr. Mieres. A thousand dollars is the threshold that is in the state statute that says if it if it is at least two acres and it makes a thousand dollars, then you have to permit it by right. But if it's less than $1,000, um, but it's something, that's what, that's what we're talking about. That's what requires a, a um, special permit. Yes. Mr. Phillips, I'm sorry. Gary Phillips, Precinct 7. If the purpose of all of this uh, work we're doing here is to simplify uh, our zoning uh, bylaws, and uh, this amendment would not change the meaning or the function of um, this classification, um, I would suggest we leave, uh, we, we accept this amendment um, because it is just more user friendly and it uh, would go ahead and help uh, the novice, the newcomer, to understand that uh, there is a distinction between uh, accessory uses and uh, that which is agricultural. 
So I, I'm, I do intend to su support the request uh, to pass this uh, particular amendment. Further discussion? We have a question down here. I'm um, Andy Friedman. I'm not a, a, a town meeting member, but I am the um, chair of the Board of Health. And um, I think a, a couple of comments. Um, yesterday, when all this sort of blew up, or the day before yesterday, um, for me at least, I think the confusion came in in that um, everyone, including myself, who, who should know how to read regulations and bylaws, um, missed the word commercial uh, in the first sentence of the definition of agriculture. And, and I finally got to that, uh, you know, I finally read up and found <laughs> this really isn't a, a, a problem. But, but, but I think that um, in order to help uh, the novice um, or to make it more user-friendly, um, it might be helpful if you uh, called out that, as we did in, 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 in our regulations, not that there has to be quid pro, quid pro, pro, quid pro quo, but um, we did point out that um, the the um, commercial agricultural uses are regulated by the zoning um, committee and, and, um, and that we regulate the backyard chicken uh, thing. So I think if something could be done to make it a little clearer that, um, you know, when you talk about, you know, agricultural and chickens and poultry and all that are, are strewn throughout the document, but only in one place is it referred to as a commercial, uh, that, that, that we're referring to commercial uses. So um, it, it might be helpful to do something in the document to make it a little more clear that we are uh, talking about commercial uh, operations. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Herrick. Steve Herrick, Precinct 8. Uh, might it not be simpler to make a minor change to the definition of agriculture? Could we, is it possible to insert some language in there just to make it clear that uh, I read that and to me it was very obvious. I think other people did, some people missed it. If we had some language that just said, rather than go back and try to, the search and replace business looks painful and potentially problematic because agriculture is showing up everywhere and which ones do you change and which ones don't you change? You're just talking about the meanings of words. Could we not just insert some language in that definition to say this does not cover, um, you know, agricultural purposes, agricultural use for non-commercial, private, um, non-retail enterprise or something of that sort? Is there something in there? Would that be an easier way of addressing this situation where everybody seems to be confused about the meaning of this word? Mr. Meares. We have to make your own judgment as to whether it's easier, but you certainly could do it that way. I'm happy to try to draft a sentence that would would would. Is, is there is, is there are there? You could probably come up with six words that would do this for us, and then we. I probably can. <laughs> well, keep going. There's more to the definition. Than So you could add a sentence at the end, not not as a bullet, but back out to the to the main part of the yeah, like that. Agriculture is 
does not include any such activity. Oops. Well, you don't you don't want it to be a bullet. <laughs> While you're working on that, Mr. Donnelly Moran, if he comes up with wording, is this something you would potentially accept as your motion? Yes. Okay, then we'll continue. Okay. Agriculture does not include any such activity. Did you have a point of order, Mr.? Oh. Oh, okay. We have a point of order? not undertaken for commercial purposes. Nick Safina, Precinct 3 and CPDC, this is not the way to write zoning. The exception should be listed under the regulation part, not in the definition. You're writing a definition for what this is not. It says commercial agriculture. How much more, less residential can that be? Well, that's more of an you argument. You also need to see the entire amendment. Does it still include the change to the table, or does it not include the change to that table? That's something I will ask Mr. Donnelly Moran. Uh, because oh, oh. Uh, the moderator did not accept the same sort of change to the table at the last meeting from another amendment. In this case, it's, it's an attempt to leave things the way they are. That's why I'm inclined to accept this one. Do we have the wording? You all set with that? No? Are you still contemplating? Are you all set with the wording? Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Donnelly Moran, would you accept that as your original motion? Is there any objection to that? Not appearing. Any more discussion on this proposed amendment? Yes. Ms. West. I think we've gotten this one pretty confused now, and I, I agree that we now have a definition that's that's contradicting. And, and I actually wonder if we could have gone back to that first section and just added on that this does not apply to residential use, and leave it at that. But yes. Thank you, Jeff Struble, Precinct 7. If I could recapitulate as to what, what I think I've heard tonight. Um, all the red gone away, the way it was presented. As I understand it, um, it's always, the, the bylaw is tailored towards commercial, I mean, the restrictions are commercial agriculture. It's, there's also language in there bringing it into, into agreement with state statutes, correct? All right. And I, what set the, the town on the self-righteous warpath that we've all been experiencing for the last couple of days is the fact that we seem to have misinterpreted that, saying that there was a way to, to apply that to uh, residential agricultural, you know, bees, chickens, and rabbits. Uh, am, I, am I correct in that? Mr. Harris? To be clear, okay. I'll try. It doesn't matter whether it's a residential property generally or not a residential property ge generally. It, what matters is whether it's, there's money involved. Understood. Okay. Wonderful. Like, I'm glad you said that. Um, keep your thinking cap on. If in the definition, of, as I've got it here, which was un, un, you know, untainted in my, um, uh, my, my latest uh, printout, uh, starting off the definition of agriculture, the production, keeping, or maintenance for sale or lease of plants or animals. If you just said the production, keeping, or maintenance for commercial sale or lease of plants or animals, would that, I know it wouldn't have any legal you know, distinction, but would that be just clear enough for novices looking at the, at, at the bylaw to understand that what the, when they see the word agriculture, it's for 
that sort of um, that sort of purpose, and they can really simplify this whole process. One word. That's what I'm, that's what I'm asking. Mr. Mayors. So you're you want to you're proposing to strike for commercial purposes and move the word commercial up to for commercial sale like that. Commercial sale at least, and everything else goes away. No, just just keep it as keep it as agriculture because the word agriculture is referenced so many times. Got it. In, but in but you now you've added the word commercial, which now appears twice in this sentence. No, I, no, I, forget forget everybody before me. Say I, I was the first one no, to no, make an amendment the, here. Pretend that's the case. This sentence in the pure, pristine form. Yes, if we just put the word commercial for there, commercial purposes already. Uh, for the production or maintenance for commercial sale or lease. No, no, no. Keep going. Sale, lease of plants or animals for commercial purposes. You have it twice. Great. It, it, would that not be clear to anyone reading it that, that that's what agriculture means? No, no that actually makes it less clear because I don't know what it means to say commercial sale or lease for commercial purposes suggests that that you could do a commercial sale or lease for something else. I, you, putting things in twice is always a bad idea. Okay. So, so I, you I, can I have either to, one, but you can't have both. I, I, I'm just trying to get out of this as cleanly as possible with the, 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 the leaving the, the very, I think, carefully crafted language that's already got into this and to stop monkeying with it and, and get something that is be just clear to the, the naked, you know, the, the novice reader that this is what it means. And you're not going to impact you know, what, what you've already got, your, your two or three chickens in the backyard and so forth. That, that's what I'm trying to get at, and that's what I thought I was trying to do. But if you say no, I believe you. But I think we should be going in that direction rather than all these extras, um, uh, you know, definitions and, and, and amendments. It's just, it's just getting ridiculous, people. Further discussion? Yes. Ms. Schneider. Dina Snyder, Precinct 5. I'm just wondering, can't you just put a footnote in to clarify it? I've seen regulations with footnotes on them, so you're not changing the definition. You're not fussing around with this. You're keeping the zoning clean. You're not including an anti in a definition. You just have a little footnote to clarify that it doesn't apply to non-commercial backyard pets. Further discussion? Yes. Hi, I'm Jackie Petrillo, Precinct 6. I'm new to this process, so maybe that's why, but this seems like a very big waste of time, and we are splitting hairs over something that seems very clear. The word commercial purposes appears in the definition. If you are reading any sort of bylaw, law, I don't care what it is, and there's a definition section, you should be looking to the definitions. And anybody who is looking to do something by a bylaw should be looking at a definition section. We, if there is further clarification needed, maybe put the word only after purposes so that it's clear that it's commercial purposes only, but I still think that's redundant. So I don't know how to do it by the laws that we work under here, but is there a way to you know, move on? Because this is really... Jeff Hansen, Precinct 7, move the question. Should I say that? I just did. He just oh, did. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, are you moving the question on this particular amendment? Okay. If this requires a two thirds vote, do I have my counters from the other night? I do. <laughs> um, all those in favor of. What are we voting on? We are voting to end debate on this proposed amendment. 
Okay, uh, we have my four counters, Mr. Brown, Mr. Crook, Mr. Rushworth, and uh, Ms. Russell. Okay, all those in favor of ending debate on this particular amendment, please rise. Twenty-nine. 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 Thirty-six. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Thirty-three. Those opposed? Two. Two. One. 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 Zero. Zero. Vote being 122 in the affirmative, four in the negative, we have moved the question. We will now take a, a vote on the proposed amendment, which let me make sure we know what we're voting on here. It's adding the word agriculture does not include any such activity not undertaken for commercial purposes. All those in favor of that proposed amendment, please raise your hand. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on. What was the problem? Was there a problem? Oh, okay. All those in po point of order? Point of order, Mr. Moderator. Could we see it on the screen, what we're voting? No, 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 it's not. It's on page five. But you read a phrase that had oh. been added as a... Bob, go back to the definition of agriculture. Oh, let's go back. Right there. Yeah. Oh, are no, we here voting it is. on the phrase at the bottom, or are we voting... What are we, we are voting on the phrase at the bottom, which says agriculture does not include any such activity if not undertaken for commercial purposes. Everybody all set? Oh, hold on one second. This was the 26th. Correct. Excuse me one second. Yes, just to be clear, this is replacing your original motion to, re to put the word uh, commercial agriculture everywhere. Yes, I, that's what we had recorded. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so as I said, we're, we're voting on this line in red, which I had just read. All those in favor of that proposed amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Further business under Section C. Oh, we have one? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Tony DeRezzo, Precinct 2. I'd like to make the change to Section 5.5.1. I. such to say the following accessory structures are only allowed by special permit by the Community Planning and Development Commission in all districts for a period not to exceed 180 days, provided that such accessory structures meet all yard requirements, and to strike the words and advertising from section one of a truck trailer used for storage, excuse me, or advertising. That added on there. Oh, which is as it is on the screen. Thank you. You added one word, no, no. didn't you? Sorry. Oh. Um, I thought this was the original, not my amendment. I apologize. Okay, so that the last word you added is not. Yes. Section one originally said a truck trailer used for storage or advertising. I thought I also had to remove the or advertising afterwards. Okay. All right. So it's the way it, it's, it was originally put up here. Okay. Yeah. Is there a second to that? Mr. Dresium? It just seems to me that allowing um, large storage units, shipping containers, is counterintuitive to actually a growing town. It looks more like something that a uh, that you're turning into more of a, um, a dying industry. If a business needs additional storage, they should be building an accessory structure or expanding the building itself. I think allowing for 180 days as a temporary storage works for any business that needs it on a temporary basis, but if it's going to be long-term, it should be something that's more permanent. Further, dis further discussion? Oh, do we have a second on that? Second. Further discussion? Mr. Arena? Uh, 
Uh, John Arena, Precinct 1. I believe the proposed amendment would run afoul of those who use um, those temporary storage. Um, they're called pods, or there's a variety of competitors. They're obviously marked. They're typically used for some duration of time. Um, and so I rather wonder if there's un unanticipated consequences to the proposed motion. I understand the spirit of it, and I, I think I might even agree with it. But I think the spirit of it is actually comprehended in the special permit, such that our, our town um, elected and uh, um, employees and appointed members can apply that judgment. I, I think the spirit of it's already comprehended in the use of a special permit. I'd just be mindful that we don't try to over-regulate in the spirit of trying to get all the uh, potential exceptions nailed. That's kind of one of the reasons you have special permits, is to have the circumstances at the time determined and reviewed by the individuals at the time. And they'll be in a much better position to know what's going on than for us to guess them here today uh, on an evening on uh, uh, late into the evening. So thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Drezzo? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Tony Drezzo, Precinct 2. Uh, I believe Section J, Temporary Storage Units, may be allowed for candle pods for residential districts. Thank you. And was there another hand, Mr. Crook? Stephen Crook, Precinct 2. A quick question on I-3. It's as a steel storage unit. What if I have an aluminum storage unit? or plywood, or something else. Why steel, specifically? Further debate? Not appearing. Oh, yes, on the... Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jackie Petrillo, Precinct 6. Just a question on this amendment, changing the may to shall. Um, may is permissible, shall is mandatory. So if you, per, if you change a may be allowed to shall be allowed, doesn't that imply that you have to allow it by the legal definition of may to shall? Mr. Meares. Well, if I were drafting this, I would have left it as may. Right. I... Um, the, but in this case, so, it, so I, I don't mind the only. The only is fine. Say again? The only is fine. May be right. allowed only. Correct. By special permit. But shall implies that it is. Shall, that in this case, must. I don't think that there's any special difference between. But uh, legally, but may you, and shall you're are right, different. You're right that may is permissive and, and shall, shall is, is mandatory. mandatory. So now and you're. This is case, since it's got only. One is permitting you to do it only in one circumstance, and one is, is saying you may only you you shall only do it in one. So they're mandating that you only do it. So in this particular case, I, it doesn't make any. I don't think it makes any difference. But you're right. I, if I would have, if I were drafting it, I would have left it as may. Can I? How do I change that? Would you like to amend this to say? I will accept an amendment to the amendment. Yes. Can I so. make an amendment to the amendment to strike the word shall and reintroduce uh, the word may so that it is permissible, not mandatory? Is there a second to that motion? Second. Further discussion by you or no? Further discussion? Yes. Mr. Eric? Uh, Steve Eric, uh, Precinct 8. I, d this applies to all areas. This is not just residential. Am I correct in that? This is for commercial uh, zoning as well? Do we have an answer? The answer is yes. Yes. Answer yes. Okay. Um, I, that's what I thought. I just wasn't 100 percent certain. So I'm curious. Um, there is actually, I don't know if other people have probably noticed it too, there is a, uh, a uh, I believe it's Goodwill maintains a tractor trailer truck in the parking lot at the Home Goods, which I see frequently because I live at that end of town. Um, would this require a special permit? Let me think. 
We're going to say that we're saying, well, we're kicking them out. We're saying they can't do this. So I guess the question is, we can't do this. Um, is that interpretation correct is the first question. The second part of that question is, it's not even a permanent structure. So is there any grandfathering or are we telling the Goodwill guys to beat it with this? I'm just curious what your position is on that. Sorry about that. Just me, hours. Okay, so it didn't. Uh, I, I've not seen this thing, so I'm I'm just imagining what it's like. It's it's a, maybe this high on a big box. Oh, oh no no! It's like the kind of thing that you'd hook a big truck up to the front of and pull it around the highway if you want. Oh, it's a to. whole full trailer. It's a trailer. Okay. It is a trailer. It okay, is a, but the point is, it's not a structure, so it didn't. It's not a structure. It's on wheels and it. Okay, I've never seen zoning it doesn't move. doesn't actually kit. I mean, you you can prohibit vehicles and you know whatever. So. Um, so it sounds like if this is something that exists all the time, it's been there for a okay, long so, time now. So it's a it's a non-conforming use, um, both as a the, truck and a structure. I think. Well, it's probably not a structure, but okay, uh, it's non-conforming. So you can't the, whatever you do here isn't going to require it to be torn down, but it is going to require a special permit if somebody wants to do something just like it. But, um, okay, so vis-a-vis -vis the, um, the amendment, it would be allowed, but by a special permit. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Lori Vinsquare, Precinct 4. Um, would this apply to things like the book drop um, near the schools, the shoe, the clothes things for donations? Um, and in this case, would uh, restrict it to 180 days? The answer is no. No? Thank you. Further discussion? Yes. Mr. Her um, Jeff Hansen, Precinct yes. 7. I have a concern with the 180-day limit. It seems like it might be a, a kind of a heavy restriction to place on our businesses, especially when we can regulate it through the special permit process of the CPDC. Further discussion? Yes. The web. Can, can somebody explain to me, the previous speaker, why this wouldn't apply to all those? Book drops, shoe drop, clothes drops, things, because those are certainly steel storage units. Definitely. Mr. Mayorish. Well, I guess you have a a a more inclusive definition of storage than I would. I wouldn't consider these drop boxes to be storage units. You're not storing there, you're just accepting it for pickup. Mr. Brown. I believe there are municipal property and the town is exempt from the zoning bylaws. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Ladario. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. We're under Dario Precinct 6. Uh, I'm wondering, is there some contradiction in having the accessory structures uh, be able to stay for 180 days? Now, we're, we're talking about a truck trailer, standalone shipping and storage in a steel storage unit, and then temporary storage units in J have only 90 days. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, the truck trailer, the standalone, because they're not there permanently, they're temporary. They're temporary in that they have to leave in 180 days. 
So I'm just wondering what the 180 and the 90, if it makes sense. Any comments? Further discussion? None appear, is there? Oh, yes, thank you. Ms. Herrick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, so, are and other churches also exempt from the zoning bylaws? Mr. Mayor. Is so what's exempt is religious uses if they are on property that is owned or leased by a nonprofit religious organization. The word church um, um, doesn't draw the line exactly in the same way that I would. If it's a religious okay. use, whether it's a church or not, and it's owned by a, a nonprofit religious organization or leased by such an organization, then it is exempt. Okay, I was just trying to, I appreciate Mr. Brown's comment, I was just trying to, um, see if it, it was inclusive of those other properties where these steel storage units appear. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Not appearing? Are we ready for the vote? We have an amendment to the amendment which changes the word may to shall. We will take a vote on that first. Is it the other way around? Shall to may. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, shall to may. Sorry. All those in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. We will now vote on the amendment as amended, which adds, I guess, oh, is that, we have it up on the screen? We do. Okay. Everybody clear what we're voting on? <laughs> What's in the red font? Yes, the red language. I'll give you a second to read it. All right, are we ready for a vote? All those in favor of the proposed amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Further business under Section C. Yes, Mr. Sasso? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Sasso, Precinct 2. Um, just a couple minor items. Um, So the first one is in section 5.6.2.5, page 38, uh, item A, just the last part of that sentence, um, um, a recommendation to, to change that to uh, uh, from 4.6.4 just to 4.6, um, which is the overall site plan review, uh, site plan um, uh, section 4.6.4, I believe is just the um, applicable regulations themselves. Okay, do we have a second on that motion? Thank you. Any further discussion on that? Um, Go just, ahead. If I can add also in on page. Well, we'll, we'll handle ahead. this one first. Yeah, okay, any discussion on this? All those in favor of the proposed amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Sasso. Um, the next one is on page um, 39, the next page, 5.6.3 uh, in the first paragraph. Um, this was the other area where um, the ZBA may grant the special permit in accordance with section, and it says 4.3. Uh, which I believe it should be 4.4. 4.3 is um, like CPDC, and 4.4 is the um, uh, the special permit. Okay. Is there a second on that? Second. Further discussion? None appearing. We're ready for the vote. All those in favor of the proposed amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Sasso. Um, and then, Mr. Moderator, I just have one uh, question. Um, those are the only. Um, two or three items that I found through this section, but um, I just it was um, in section 5.6.2.2. Um, there's a section that lists definitions, and um, maybe I was um, mis misunderstood, but I thought part of the um, zoning cleanup we were going to pull definitions out of 
um, the bylaw sections and put them into section two? <coughs> Mr. Mayor? Yes, we are, but that's not happened yet. So we haven't pulled any definitions out of the definition sections yet. In the cleanup a year from now, that's what we hope to do. Okay, so even for sections that we're changing, we're not, we haven't done that. That's correct. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Further discussion in section C? Yes, Ms. Young. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, Megan Young, Precinct 4. I was wondering, can I approach the front? I have definitions and I need coaching from. I'd submitted them earlier sure. and I've got some changes and I like coaching, if that's all right. Do you mind if I come up? Sure. Is that all right? Come. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Megan Young, Precinct 4. Um, these are definitions that um, are affiliated with the youth table that had not been included. Um, I know that I seem a little obsessive about definitions, and I am. Um, I've been on um, EDC for nine and a half years, and um, if you don't have a definition, um, a lot of times it's up to interpretation. I, I can remember one that when I first started was art, and how do you describe art? And how, um, so. I'm, I'm making these definition recommendations and um, I'm welcome friendly amendments throughout the process. So my first motion is to move that the town vote to amend the zoning bylaw by inserting a new definition of age-restricted multifamily dwelling in section two as follows. And dwelling, multifamily, age-restricted, a building or portion thereof containing three or more dwellings constructed expressly for use in residence in accordance with section 406 of chapter 151B of the Massachusetts General Laws by persons who have achieved a minimum age of 55 years. I like that you achieve it. Um, but anyway, um, and, and, and I, my original uh, motion was um, amended by Ray to include um, the Massachusetts laws. Okay, is there a second? Second, Ms. Young? No further. Okay. Information, unless anybody needs it. It's just that it was the only one that wasn't um, defined. The other two were defined, but um, age-restricted multifamily was not defined. Mr. Tuttle? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Dave Tuttle of, of various communities and Precinct 3. I am opposed to this inclusion, and it was a deliberately uh, removed the regulatory statement of a specific age because the definition of age restricted should not be tied to a particular age. If you, this would be a useless definition if somebody wanted to build a property with an age restriction of 49 or 18 or 100. Mr. Meares? The, the reason um, for the reference to age 55 is because that's what's permitted under the Fair Housing Act. If you use any other number but 55, then you would be in violation of federal law. Ms. Young, did you have another comment? No. Further discussion? None appearing. Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. Ms. Young? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Megan Young, Precinct 4. Move that the town vote to amend the zoning bylaw by inserting a new definition of facilities for skilled trades in Section 2 as follows. Facility for skilled trades, an establishment for use by the practitioner of a building trade such as a carpenter, welder, plumber, electrician, builder, mason, landscaping contractor, lawn care service, or building cleaning service, or similar occupation. Is there a second? Second, Ms. Young. Again, this was an omission, um, and I found this, I think it was in Sharon, um, that was, it, I, I basically looked at you, um, bylaws of Massachusetts, and I found this definition, and it was approved by the, um, our town um, attorney. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Tuttle?
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, once again, it's, I believe that this is too specific. If somebody uh, were to open a shop uh, who, who, and their skilled trade were uh, cell phone repair, I believe that this is as much a facility for skilled trades as any of the, the items here. And there's a huge variety of skilled trades characterized by uh, training and specialized equipment that should be captured by the definition, but this one uh, is too restrictive and too specific. Is West. Just to build on, on Dave's comments, we've actually had um, specific zoning issues in town from having uh, things that are defined but not everything in the entire list. We actually had uh, the Dirty Doodle who's given us permission to give, use him as a, who had a lot of difficulty and had to go and get all kinds of special permits and variances and everything else because his particular industry is not listed in the definition. So there's some very specific places that we did not try and list whole long lists of, uh, because it, it made it much easier. Uh, we, what we wanted to do was to have people who had very reasonable, you know, they're doing a skilled trade. They, they don't have to um, have something in a checklist. So thanks. Ms. Young. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Megan Young. Um, as we hadn't been informed at all about definitions, and the conversation about definitions um, yet. I had no um, choice but to think that, and I, I think I specifically asked um, earlier um, in our conversation if there was a reason why definitions were left out. Um, as it was, that, that question was not answered. I thought in, in looking at the other definitions where we actually have defined things clearly and specifically that this would be something that we would need to do here. Thank you. Further discussion? Then appearing, and we're ready for the vote. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Peg Russell, Precinct 3. What if we took out the word building so that it just read an establishment for use by the practitioner of a trade? Because that would take care of electronic repair and so forth. Um, I, I, I love that. So you would accept that? Is there any? I would accept that. Is there any objection? Okay, then we will accept that as part of the motion. Further discussion? Yes. Linda Snow Doxer, Precinct 1. I think that the list of the trades up there also is restrictive, so I'm wondering as a friendly amendment to take out such as and the list of the trades. Um, so it's an establishment for use by the pr practitioner of a trade. Thank you, Linda. I think that's an excellent um, friendly amendment. And I know from listening to Ray, when he talks about definitions, he's always said less is more, and I agree with him. So I would certainly support that if Ray does. <laughs> Mr. Miari, do you have a comment? So it, so it would now read an establishment for use by a practitioner of a trade. Dave? Um, Mr. Miaris, yeah. Okay. Geez, it sort of cries out to say for practitioners of a skilled trade, doesn't it? Um, I'm not sure that uh, uh, are nurses um, included. Or even just as an example, such as a carpenter welder, something like that. Well, I think that the idea was to take the, the examples out. Well, I'm I'm afraid that that what we ended up with is a is a definition that doesn't actually define anything. Um, which is which I understand is why it was not. I, I think that if you're going to do, if you're going to take out all the examples, you probably should stick the word skilled back in. Um, it, it doesn't really 
I think advanced the ball very far, but at least it's a definition. At this point, I'm not sure what our amendment is. Uh, so, so, would you read what you now consider your amendment? Certainly. And, um, facility for skilled trades, an establishment for use by the practitioner of a skilled trade. Okay. Is there any objection to that being her motion? I, I'm actually not liking it either. Um, <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I, I, um, if, if, Okay, so I think I'm going to go back to Ray, and if Ray is cool with, I, I, I don't know, when we put a use in and it's not defined in any way, is that a problem? Um, and, and if the Zach committee had a conversation about it and came up with the determination that they did not need that definition, is that true? Did the Zach committee have a specific conversation about this definition and you said, you know, we don't need this? Do we have a... An answer? Ms. West. I must admit that we spent three months on definitions, and it was quite a while ago in the beginning of the process, so I do not recall if we specifically addressed this one issue, but I can tell you that we did very specifically decide not to include lists of things, and we made a very conscious decision about anything that was like this. Okay. So any other things that are like this, we did not feel an obligation to define. Yeah. Um, knowing that, I would like to please remove my motion. Is there any objection? Then we've withdrawn the motion. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ms. Young. Um, I have to take my glasses somehow. Um, Megan Young, Precinct 4, move that the town vote to amend the zoning bylaw by inserting a, nef a new definition of tourist and trailer camps in Section 2 as follows. Tourist and trailer camps, premises for accommodation for travel, trailers, campers, tenting, or similar mobile facilities are provided for a fee. Is there a second? Second, Ms. Young. I actually wanted to do this one, or wanted to look up for a definition for this one, because I, I was worried about like mobile homes or you know what in fact this was when it entered the the use table. I really thought it needed some help. Further discussion on this amendment? Renna, yes, Mr. Crook. Stephen Crook, Precinct 2. Is a tourist and trailer camp different than a campground? Do we have an answer? Ms. Young? I actually don't know. It was just added. I don't know why we came up with the terms. I, I actually hear what you're saying too, because um, I, I think of it as campground as well. Um, I don't have opinion. I, I don't have a solution, but it, it's a very good question. Further discussion on this amendment. We all set for a vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, and the chair is in doubt. Uh, all those in favor, please rise. Nine. Nine. Sixteen. Nineteen. Nineteen. Eleven. Eleven. Those opposed, please rise. Six. Six. Thirteen. Thirteen. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Fourteen. The vote being 55 in the affirmative, 57 in the negative, the motion does not carry. Ms. Young. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I will need help from Ray for this one, please. Thank you. This is the whole. Do we have it? No. And, and Can I, 
I can see what I originally did. So uh, we have a designation in the use case for indoor recreation, and um, it is not defined. Um, so I said, I found, I found a definition, and I submitted to Ray, and Ray came back with the following conversation. Okay, so um, on the use table, as presently as it presently exists, there was place of public assembly with a definition, there was indoor recreation with no definition, and there was uh, commercial amusement which had no def uh, no definition. And um, on Monday, you adopted a definition, um, and each of those had different rules. And um, so I was asked to see if I could come up with a definition of indoor recreation that was different from, um, from place of assembly, was different from health exercise or fitness club, and um, was different from commercial amusement. And I failed. I couldn't do it. So um, I said, uh, what makes sense to me is um, uh, to adjust the definition of health club so that it um, it, so that it's clearly a, uh, a facility that's for members and guests only um, <coughs> and to define indoor recreation more broadly then I proceeded to uh, violate a rule that I just heard for the first time which was you don't like definitions that have whole lots of examples. Can I ask a question? Which okay. is, so what I just heard you say yes. is that in looking in a definition for indoor recreation, it was covered in these other areas. No? I no? no? So, okay. All right. So, so you're saying that this. I'm saying that if you have different rules for different uses, you need to have clearly different concepts in mind. <laughs> so indoor recreation. Um, as I understand it, is I, well, I asked um, Jesse and Jean to tell me what was included. And we talked about some different kinds of things. And then I, um, uh, and I put together a list of things that would be included and said those are, that's what indoor recreation is. And it's basically defined as recreation facilities that are indoors. So why is that different from, from a health exercise or fitness club? Well, the principal thing seems to be that Though, uh, in a fitness club, your facilities are made available to members and guests. That's the difference. Um, that begs the question, if we have a definition of indoor recreation, why don't we have a definition for outdoor recreation? So I gave a shot at that as well. Um, our definition of place of assembly included things like theaters and cinemas and stuff, and then for reasons that I, no one seemed to be able to explain to me, included bowling alleys, which seems like it doesn't belong there, so I took it out. Um, um, the moderator pointed out to us that because the definition of commercial amusement was adopted last time, was, uh, and nobody filed an amendment within 24 hours, you can't vote to reconsider it. So, um, so uh, instead, this amendment would strike commercial amusement from the use table. It would have a term that's defined and not otherwise used. Um, and indoor and outdoor recreation would be treated the same way on the use table and would have a separate definition. Uh, that's a lot of changes, um, but uh, I, I was trying to make sense of a series of uses that were being treated differently and not properly um, defined. So. I worked um, with the staff and with the um, proponent, and that's what I came up with. Um, it may not be perfect, but at least it has different definitions for different uses. Ms. Young. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. This is getting too complicated, and I don't want to go there. I would, can I um, make an instructional motion on this definition um, for folks to come back and write something clean? and? or come back to us and tell us that it wasn't even something we needed to define. Um, my concern is we have defined 
um, health and exercise fitness club, we have added a use case for indoor recreation. So I guess my question is, if we have this distinction, what is it? Um, so I, I'm wondering, can I make an instruction? Well, what first can I of do? all, are you are you? Um, oh, tell me what to do. Are you not going to make your motion? I on think the, that I, it's best because okay. it's too complicated and it would take too much time. If, if you want to, like if you want to make it. a formal instructional motion, you would do that later when that article is up, right. or you may just want to make a comment right now, and, and it's just your own comments, but that's up to you. I'm going to remove this, and I, will, and I think I already made my comment, so okay. I'm going to stop right there. All right. Thank is, you. Is there any objection to this not being her proposed amendment? None appearing. Okay, further discussion. Do you have more? I is think I do, okay. and I haven't talked to Ray about it, but um, one of the things that I had looked at and was concerned about was that um, I, when I was looking over um, our um, bylaw, zoning bylaw, I um, particularly paid attention to Belmont's because uh, Belmont had been something that the Economic Development Committee had used as we were working on the sign area of the zoning bylaw. And one of the things that they had, I don't know if we still have it, um, Bob, do you have the interpretation thing that I submitted? Yes. Okay, so I'm not going to submit this. This is something that Belmont did, and Belmont basically said that it, uh, they've got in their bylaw this information that basically says, hey, what happens if you have a definition that, um, or you, you have a use that isn't in the use table, or you have a conflict, or it could be in either area? Um, I was worried about that. Um, Ray explained to me, and I think, Ray, you have the notes. I don't know where the notes are here now. But you, you feel strongly, oh, here it is, um, that this proposal is problematic for town council. The first two sentences would be true even if they are stated here. Um, the third sentence is a particularly bad idea because uses that are specifically mentioned in the zoning law should be considered prohibited, intended meaning of section 5.0. And um, one of the things that he also said that I thought was important to point out, that um, there are a lot of unlisted uses, like nuclear waste incineration, um, that I believe would be, would all be comfortable saying should be prohibited, and that the proposed amendment would make the, uh, the allowed by special permit. So I withdrew this amendment, but I did want to let you know that I had thought about, like, or been concerned about what happens when there is a use that's not in here. So I, I just wanted to mention that. Okay, so to be clear, you have not made another amendment. I'm not making okay. an amendment to that, but what I did say in what I wrote was that in looking at that, and this is in our use table, this, and if you go to other, let me see what page that is. If you go to page 28, and if you look at other uses, and if you go to the very bottom of other uses, you'll see that there is a, there's something that says uses substantially similar to a buy, um, a buy right use. So that is in the business area. And my thought was that we needed to move it to other in the residential districts as well. So it would be consistent. Um, and I haven't talked to Ray about that, if he thinks that's a good idea or not. But I thought if it was in one place, it probably should be in the other as well. Okay. Mr. And Mayor? if so, I would make an amendment. But I wanted, so it's a question. Sorry. Mr. Meares? Well, in my defense, uh, I think the rule ought to be things that are not listed are prohibited. You don't want it to be the rule that things that are not listed, you look for the thing that is most similar to it, which might not be very similar to it at all, and apply the same rules. And that's the reason why I came up with nuclear waste incinerator. That seemed like about the worst use I could dream up of uh, shortly and said, what is that most similar to? I don't know what it's most similar to, but, but if it's similar to something on that table, chances are it's probably permitted somewhere, maybe by special permit. And I think you probably don't want nuclear waste incinerators probably anywhere in Reading. So uh, that's, the rule should be, if it's not listed, 
um, it's prohibited. Now, I'm willing to, I, I, I think it's probably a good idea to say for commercial uses, as they did there, he's saying if it's substantially similar to something that's permitted by right, so that's a limited number of things, and if it's substantially similar, not just you know pick the one that it's most similar to, but if it's substantially similar and it's permitted by a special permit, that seems, um, that, that seems perfectly sensible. I don't know that that's really necessary in residential districts because the number of permitted by right uses is pretty limited. And I, you know, I don't really know what it means to be you know, substantially similar to a residence. It's, so um, I, I, I'll put myself down as agnostic on that point, whether it's necessary or not. The, um, uh, uh, but I live, in, I live in Belmont, and I'm planning to take that sentence up with my uh, town meeting members because I think it's a, uh, wrong-headed. Based on that discussion, I will not be making amendment to add anything, um, any changes. Thank you very much. I think I'm all set. Okay. Further discussion in section C. Mr. Hanson? Oh, no, you just, okay. Further discussion? Oh, yes. Mr. Tafoya? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, town meeting members, Ben Tafoya, precinct four. Um, I have a few suggestions um, for changes to the table of uses um, in terms of what's allowed uh, and what's not allowed. Uh, so the first motion that I would make uh, would be uh, to change uh, from the uh, column I'm sorry, the row that is in uh, residence districts for restaurants um, in table 5.3.1 uh, for the column business C, uh, remove the requirement uh, for a special permit from that cell and replace it with the word no. Okay, at the right place? Yes. Okay, is there a second? Second, Mr. Tafoya. Yes, uh, the, um, I have a couple of motions here related to business C. The intent of all of them are to return the um, underlying zoning, by right zoning for business C um, to that which is in the current um, zoning bylaw. Uh, this is a continuation of the discussion we started uh, last session uh, which resulted in the change um, that you can see in uh, red there for a uh, retail store up to 35,000 square feet. Are you set? Yes. Is there further discussion? Yes, Mr. Crook. Could you refresh my memory? Which section is business C? I know it's quicker to put up a map or just to yeah, just business, lend itself to description. Ms. Delios? Oh, uh, he, business C oh, is Tafoya. the um, site of Reading Woods where Pulte Homes is building now. Uh, it was the, uh, uh, it includes a portion of it which is the Gateway Smart Growth District. Um, it's divided into four planning sub-districts, uh, A, B, C, and D. Uh, the uh, planning sub-districts have different um, building allowances under the um, current as well as proposed um, zoning bylaw. Uh, and um, there were um, apparently uh, some changes that were proposed in the table of uses related to business C uh, that uh, uh, did not, for whatever reason, um, come to the attention of uh, the uh, uh, abutting property owners who had been engaged with the town in two very long uh, rezoning efforts, one um, over a decade ago and one just a few years ago um, that resulted in uh, substantial changes to Business C as well as the development of the Gateway Smart Growth District. So essentially the old Addison Wesley site. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Delios? Um, yeah, I'd just like to point out um, 
There is one other piece, and we talked about this a lot at the Zoning Advisory Committee. Some of you might be familiar with the um, real estate building that's, uh, it looks like a house, and it's some sort of mass association of realtors, and they do all kinds of training there, and um, it's quite prominent right on Main Street. That is part of Business C. So when we started looking at the table of uses, we started thinking about that property in particular and wondering, you know, what's the future of that? If that use goes away and the property were to be to redeveloped. So that's why some of these changes were, were put in there. So I just wanted to make that clear. Where is the discussion? Mr. Berman? Thank you, Mr. Matter. Barry Berman, Precinct 4. Um, I'd like the proponent of the amendment to explain why, in his opinion, a restaurant would not be a good use for that area. It's right on the main street. It might be actually a good use. So I'm wondering what the thinking is on not allowing that. Mr. Tapoya. Uh, the overwhelming majority of what we refer to as Business C is actually a residence zone. Um, and this is sort of one of the artifacts of the way that it had been um, previously zoned as, uh, you know, originally as sort of a, a, a light manufacturing and then a, an office complex, uh, and then um, failing because the, the property owners could not um, get a developer to go along with the zoning, uh, the town, after a long and arduous process, worked through the uh, uh, zoning changes for both the smart growth district as well as for underlying um, zoning for business C. It was carefully crafted with something that involved compromises from the neighborhood as well as the developers who were um, involved. Eventually the developer changed uh, to Pulte Homes and, and uh, what I'm trying to do is maintain the integrity uh, of the existing underlying zoning of, of the district. Uh, the um, uh, portion that the town planner referred to as a very small portion uh, of Business C, uh, which is a, uh, an area that uh, comprises 24 acres. Uh, and as anybody who's driven by it lately has seen, it's largely built out uh, according to the current uh, underlying zoning uh, with the uh, changes we put in place just a couple of years ago. Uh, the uh, abutting neighbors, um, as well as many of us, um, missed the discussions that had occurred uh, at CPDC uh, in consulting with uh, a CPDC member, he indicated that he thought that there were further restrictions that they had talked about during that discussion, which um, aren't reflected in uh, the current table of uses. Uh, and so in consideration of the neighborhood and talking to some abutters who were uh, quite unaware that this discussion was going to occur, uh, I just have a couple of simple requests for town meeting uh, to make the proposed zoning reflect the current underlying zoning uh, for Business C um, so we can move ahead. If folks want to uh, reconceptualize that district uh, at some point in the future, I think that's fine. I think it should, however, be a community conversation which also engages uh, the direct abutters as well as, quite frankly, the new residents uh, of that area. Further discussion? Yes, uh, Mr. Schubert. Oh, was there another one in the back? Mr. Schubert first, and I guess there's another one in the back. Thank you, Rick Schubert, Precinct 7. Uh, to further the discussion about this section, this Business C, um, one thing about the, uh, I, I can remember when the realtor company that sits in that spot was actually sitting with the current police station. And uh, through a little effort of our eminent domain, we. Uh, encourage them to move to that end of town. Um, but I think one of the things is we don't know. Maybe someday they will move, some, maybe someday we'll ask them to move. But I don't see any need to rezone the whole business C, the current development that we've gone through such a process to get where we are right now, to rezone the, all of business C just for the potential that someday there may be a need to rezone that. I think there's plenty of opportunity in the future to deal with that if that happens. Um, again, I would also agree that this is a pretty, um, this is one of the highest profile 
zoning issues that the town has faced in recent history, and I think it would be unwise to move forward with a major change to something that hasn't really had a full opportunity for the neighborhood to participate in the conversation. Thank you. Was there one in the back first? No. Oh, yes, in the far corner. Okay. Mr. Safina? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Nick Safina, Precinct 3 and CPDC member. Um, as presented, this table is missing several footnotes, which I think clarify what's supposed to happen in all these sub-districts. And I really think that in order to get through this process, we're better off just setting it back to the way it was as proposed in this amendment and the several that are here. Set business C back to the way it was and then we'll clarify it at a different point. I just think it'll get too complicated if we start going sub-district A, B, C, D, this is allowed here, not there. But the basis of our discussion when we were going through this at CPDC meetings and public hearing was that the sub-districts could, could support certain uses uh, I just think that not having that discussion in full in a public forum it would be wrong, and so I, I recommend that we go forward with this motion and set it back to the way it is in the current zone. And there was another hand over here somewhere. No? Further discussion? Mr. Arena? John Arena, Precinct 1, I would also support the uh, restriction for Business C to uh, remove the ability to, by, by permit, uh, place a restaurant. I, I would echo the sentiments expressed here tonight. A number of the neighbors adjacent to the former Addison Wesley, Wesley property are um, quite comfortable with the way things are now. Remember quite vividly how difficult that period was and view this as an impediment. I'm a big proponent of business. However, in this particular area, it's a small parcel and I'm not sure it even lends itself to that uh, particular use. Um, I'd have no objection to the proposed amendment. Thank you. Further discussion? None appearing. All those in favor of the proposed amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Tafoya, do you have more? Yes. Uh, in the same table, uh, I would go to the cell uh, marked Consumer Service Retail Establishment, where it currently says yes under the column Business C, uh, and change that to no. Uh, this is the same um, set of issues. Uh, if you refer to uh, the current list uh, of uh, uses uh, for that, uh, that zone, uh, consumer services uh, is also a no uh, in business C. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Ms. West. I'd, I'd just like to suggest if there are others that perhaps we can do them all as one amendment together in bus business district C. We, we actually discussed the fact that it's really not a business district. I said in our ZAC meetings, I don't know why we're calling it business C. We ought to just call it residential. It's residential. So, it, you know, let's just list the whole thing out rather than doing speeches one at a time. Thanks. Do you have several? Uh, so the uh, other one would be facility for skilled trades. That would be from yes to no. Um, that one doesn't currently exist uh, in the current table of uses in any form in any district. Um, but um, I just felt it wasn't, uh, you know, appropriate given so the uh, the underlying zoning, uh, and then the last one was convenience store, which is just above that a few rows, um, which is yes to no, uh, for the same reasons previously stated. Okay. Did anyone have an objection to talking about all three at once? None appearing. Okay. Is there a second to those the new amendment? Okay. Further discussion. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Oh, Mr. Brown. I'm sorry. Maybe it's my eyes, but I only see an O up there. I don't see the N. Okay. <laughs> okay, further discussion? Okay. None appearing. Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor of that amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. Further? Yes.
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jackie Petrillo, Precinct 6. Um, I'm not sure how to do this eloquently, but um, considering the hour and the fact that uh, my understanding is if we don't close the warrant, that all the work that we have done so far will be lost. Um, I, I don't know how to do it, but how do we move that we vote on all of this at one time, what has been proposed to the changes in the zoning law, just to end discussion and, and take a vote and see if we can move on? You would Move the question? Well, you would be asking to vote on the entire motion yes. under Section Article 8. Yes. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Okay. I will take that as a point of order. So now what you, okay. what you, want, you would want to do is to move the previous question on the entire Article 8, uh, the motion under Article 8, which is everything that we have not yet discussed. Just to understand what you're doing. The whole thing. Yes. The whole thing. So what? I'd like to move the, the question. Okay. Is just that, just so people understand, you are unless I'm misunderstanding, you're I would like to end the discussion on the and on everything, on everything yes. and see if we can vote to implement the changes as were proposed in Amendment Eight. Because my understanding is if we don't well, you, you, you cannot continue yes. there's no discussion on that. I, okay, did, okay. I, I did ask I let you ask what the procedure was. Okay. But right now we have a motion to move the previous question, which would mean we would end debate on the entire motion under Article 8, and then if, if it carried, we would then proceed to a vote. Correct. So that requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of moving the previous question, please rise. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Yes? Question. I pointed that out, yes. That yes. Clearly understood. Yes. Okay, so the motion before us is to end debate on the entire article, uh, motion under Article 8 which would end debate on everything, we would then proceed to a vote if it should carry. Okay, again, this requires Thank a two-thirds vote. Thank you. Please, if you're in favor of ending debate, please rise. One. One. Three. Three. One. One. Eight. Eight, and those opposed? Twenty-four. Twenty-nine. Seventeen. Thirty-one. Thirty-one. The vote being thirteen in the affirmative, one hundred one in the negative. The motion does not carry. We are back uh, discussing uh, section C of the motion under Article Eight. Mr. Tafoya. Uh, yes, Mr. Moderator. I have a, uh, another motion uh, under. Um, uh, the table of uses, um, this is in section 5.3.2, table of uses for residence district uh, to disallow civic or private clubs in all resident districts by removing the requirement for a special permit in residence districts S15, S20, S40, A40, and A80, and replacing those requirements with no. Okay. Uh, this was at the request of a um, constituent. Um, I, uh, I would be fascinated to hear, um, you know, why we created this category and the thought behind allowing it uh, in um, uh, in residence. So let's make sure we have it right. In under civic and private club, we've changed the uh, residence 15, 20, 40, residence A40, and residence A80 to no? Correct. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Tavoya? Yes. So um, there is a, uh, a definition for uh, a civic or uh, private club, a facility owned and operated by a nonprofit organization provides accommodation, et cetera, et cetera. It's on page six. Um, but I, I don't um, understand the rationale. I, I didn't, I wasn't able to find any kind of information as to why we're allowing that by special permit in residence zones. Do we have a comment? No, I meant, oh, Mr. Tuttle, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Dave Tuttle, Precinct 3. The, um, th 
This is a table of uses, not a table of structures or definitions or something else. There's a provision in the state law that prohibits granting a variance for a use. Therefore, if the town wants to ever allow a use in a particular district, whether it be through the Board of Appeals or through the planning group, there must be an entry in the table of uses that allows them to grant a permit. Mr. Arena? John Arena, Precinct 1. I'd be inclined to strike, to not accept this proposed amendment. One, most of our property is already occupied and allocated, so what's there is there. Two, there are non-conforming cases already, such as Meadowbrook Golf Club, which is obviously a private club and obviously for profit. So I don't see the circumstance easily arise where something new moves in, finds an appropriate parcel, and then manages to get past the special permit. While I understand the intellectual argument, I don't see it in the practical. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes. Mr. Moore? Quick point of order. When we, because of the vote for trying to move the whole question, did we miss voting on the previous amendment on changing all the yeses to noes? I think we voted on that. We did. Yeah. Thank you. Ms. O'Neill? Mary Ellen O'Neill, Precinct 4. Let me just clarify, it's interesting here to note table of uses for residents, districts, and the public institutional uses. So we see under religious, the second line, that's the Dover Amendment stuff, I would assume. I'm surprised to see other religious or educational use under all the small residential districts by special permit. If they're non-profit, religious, or educational, they're already protected in the line above. So I don't know why we would allow, is that saying we'd allow a commercial educational use in a residential district? Also to speak to Mr. Tafoya's amendment, I would assume that this would then mean that if a civic or private club bought a residential property, that they could then use it for this purpose by special permit. If that's the case, then I would agree that we should say no. I don't think we need any additional intrusions. I mean, it's fine what we have in Grandfather and the different American Legion and Meadowbrook, but we certainly don't need to have another difficult fight over losing residential neighborhoods. We're already facing a lot of fragmentation as it is. So I would definitely support this. Further discussion? Yes, Ms. Binda. Angela Binda, Precinct 5. I also support this. I think that we might not know there might be a situation that could arise a few years from now. We never know what's going to go on. We're facing situations right now that we would never have thought would have come up. So if the establishments that are already established have been our grandfathered in, I just don't see the need for this, and I don't see the need for further encroachment in residential neighborhoods. So I support the amendment. Mr. Berman? Barry Berman, Precinct 4. Wouldn't having a special permit allow for public debate and input on a potential use? I can't imagine anything. I can't imagine that we're here tonight going to just figure out that we're not going to want anything ever in a residential neighborhood and just about outlawing it now. I would have an argument if it was just, if it was said yes, but the fact that it has special permit, it's sort of that by definition is allowing for the public debate. So I would not like to see us tie our hands right now, so I would encourage you to vote no on the amendment. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Schubert. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Rick Schubert, Precinct 7. Again, like in previous cases, since there's no pressing need to change the zoning now, if a request for a use such as this comes to the town in the future, we can always 
modify the zoning to accommodate it if it's within town meeting's interest. I am going to support this amendment. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes, Ms. Herrick. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Karen Herrick, Precinct 8. I have a question. Um, Meadowbrook's a great example. So it's a very large piece of property, and I believe it falls under agricultural. Um, so if that, if that private club needs to change hands, are they going to be able to have another operator take it over? Or if we change this to no, does it suddenly become, well, we can't use it as a golf club. We need to develop it. Because that, I know that's been another concern for residents is developing all our open spaces. So I'm just wondering how that works if we make this change. Do we have a response? Yes. Mr. Ensminger. Looking at the current uh, table of uses, there's a category called club or lodge, and it's no. So it would not represent a net change at all if we kept it. Uh, so t to the degree they're non-conforming now, I guess it would still be. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? None appearing. Are we ready for the vote on the amendments, which was changing the uh, civic of private clubs from uh, special permit to no in three cases? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Further business under Section C? Yes. Ms. Whiting? Carolyn Whiting, Precinct 7. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that the motion under Article 8 be referred back to the CPDC for further review and revision, and that copies of the final draft and transla translation guide documents be provided to town meeting members at least six weeks before the next town meeting session at which the revised zoning bylaw will be considered. Is there a second? Second, Ms. Whiting? Any? I have found it very difficult to process and understand all of the current draft version of the zoning bylaw and its transla translation guide, and I feel that it would be irresponsible of me to vote for the bylaw without having understood everything. While I appreciate all the extensive work that the CPDC and Zoning Advisory Committee have already put into this revision, I found that the material provided was scattered and confusing, and I found that the lack of detailed presentation on the sections and clarity of what has changed means that it is extremely difficult to follow. I was also disappointed in the lack of detailed information presented when I attended a public meeting about the proposed zoning bylaw changes. In, conc in conclusion, I think this means that this process requires more work by the CPDC and the community to understand and discuss the pr proposed changes before town meeting votes. Thank you. Just to explain, this is a, a, a motion we don't hear too often, is to refer back to committee. It has a similar result as indefinite postponement. The difference is it's specifically asking a committee to look at it and come back at a future town meeting. But the result would be it would end this particular motion in, at this town meeting. So is there further discussion? Mr. Berman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Barry Berman, Precinct 4. Um, this seems to me like an end run around the decision we already made a couple of days ago to kind of keep plowing and going through. Um, even if this were referred back to a committee, uh, C CPDC, and they came and worked and did a presentation, I can't see that when it comes back, if and when it does, that the debate would be any different than what we're doing right now. We're going through it section by section, plowing through. People are bringing up really good suggestions. The debate um, is, has been, um, you know, has been lively. We've talked about a lot of things that a lot of folks probably haven't thought about. So I can't see how anything is going to be different if we do it six weeks, 10 weeks, or 12 weeks from now. We're probably three quarters of the way done through this. Let's just get it done. Thank you. Before we continue, I w would like to point out that the uh, town council has reminded me if this should prevail, there will be a second substitute motion for a very small piece that would be needed for a um, to uh, for, for avoiding some litigation. Is that what I saying that correctly? What was that? 
settle lit litigation, excuse me. Okay, further discussion, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Mr. Greenfield. I'm, I'm in agreement with the, uh, um, with the prior speaker. Um, I've never, ever seen uh, a document such as this with such importance undertaken in the way it is here with incremental changes that frankly no one can really understand uh, and have it just pass. Uh, so I would vote for this. If it does keep going, I'm gonna vote no uh, at the end anyway, uh, in order to send it back. I think this is all a very good discussion. We've learned a lot, and we owe it the respect to now uh, take a time out, read it in total, and move on from there uh, a, a little bit more informed. Further discussion? Mr. O'Neill. John O'Neill, Precinct 4. I mean, if this was a week ago, I was on the other side. It, I would have been supporting it. But we've had really good discussion. I haven't always agreed with the decision, but that's what the process is. We had, the, you know, I had the opportunity. Everybody had an opportunity to speak. I would think it would be a, a real mistake at this point in time to say that all the time that people have spent, you know, to just sit, put that all by the, go by the wayside, and now we're going to start all over again. So I definitely strongly, you know, disagree with this amendment. Further discussion? Mr. Arena. I empathize, John Arena, Precinct 1, I empathize with the amount of time we've spent here. This is the work that needs to be done. It's being done here by you. I said a few nights ago I was interested in hearing from you and what you thought of this work, and I know all the board is. I think it's been very helpful. I think all of the comments have been constructive. They haven't all been accepted. This is the work. This is where the work gets done. Um, to do anything but, it, we're halfway through the forest. We're deciding to turn around and go back home. We're almost done. We're halfway through. Let's plow on. The argument that there's not enough time to do it right here, but we'll have plenty of time to do it later, is almost always false. This is where the hard work gets done. It's one of the reasons this was last touched in hold in 1928 because it's so much easier to kick the can down the road. Let's get it done. Further discussion? Mr. Schubert. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Rick Schubert, Precinct 7. I would agree. I think we've actually had a lot of good input here and a lot of good discussion. Um, my interest in referring it to CPDC would be to have them, with their experience, then pull it all together in a cohesive document that really makes sense so that we can ensure that uh, there aren't any accidental omissions or confusing or counterproductive parts that we've kind of wrestled with. Some of the stuff that we've faced, whether it was the agricultural piece that we seem to resolve after a lot of discussion, um, my question is, are there other things? You know, in particular, we've had the issue with the propane section being omitted. Um, luckily, there was a town meeting member who was aware of that. So I think there's been a lot of work that's added to the input that would be useful to CPDC to take it all and wrap it together and then bring it back in one cohesive document. Thank you. Ms. Delios. Jean Delios, um, I don't know if Karen Herrick is here, but, oh, this was something that was pointed out, um, the propane issue. Actually, we are discussing the uh, motion to commit or refer to committee right now. Well, the, the point is that there was a statement made that there was something missing, and then when Karen and I met afterwards, we realized it wasn't missing. So I just want to make that clear. Okay. Further discussion? Uh, Ms. Russell. Peg Russell, Precinct 3. Uh, I was about to make the same motion to commit. I feel, uh, I, w I was very sure I was going to make that motion after the session on Monday night. We did make good progress tonight, and so I'm, I don't feel quite as strongly as I did. Uh, however, there have been, uh, I, I think the, this, I think the whole process has been productive in that I think 
we may have all learned some lessons, and uh, we've all, we all needed to learn some. I think that uh, those down front, you need to take the time to check the cross-references. You need to do the proofreading. <coughs> Cross those T's and dot those I's. That's not our job. Proofreading is your job. Our job is to debate. I think that the presentations in the future could be simplified. I, I wish you, that you would give more thought to the paperwork. Make it as simple as humanly possible. For instance, perhaps we don't need a printout of the whole zoning bylaw, just the sections that we're considering within that town meeting, possibly. It would save a lot of trees. That's the difference. Um, if it's possible, I would say divide the motions. Um, I know the interrelatedness of the sections make that very difficult to do, but if it's at all possible, make them separate motions so that we're not stuck in this position that we are tonight where we've done a lot of work. We would like to put A, B, C to bed, but we can't if we don't stay here. And I also think that if this motion passes, we don't need to wait until April to come back to deal with the subject matter of Article 8 on this town warrant. Uh, I, for one, would much rather sit here on a cold night in January and February rather than a balmy spring night in May or June. Um, for town meeting members, I think a lot of the dialogue that has gone on in these four sessions is the sort of thing that should have happened at the hearings and the meetings. I'm as much at fault as anyone. I did not go to one hearing. I did not go to one meeting. I did go to the informational one in mid-October for town meeting members, but at that point, it was too late for input for this session. Um, so I would hope that town meeting members would, if this motion passes, and I am in favor, that you would contact the ZAC and the CPDC with all the, the things that you find, whether you find cross-references or not. Um, all that stuff, that could be taken care of before it comes back to us. Um, I think we, well, all right. Lastly, I'm going to remind everyone that this body overwhelmingly passed Article 9 10 days ago. Article 9 is still sitting in the outbox. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to go to the AG until this body can adjourn sine die. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Lelasher? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I, I just would like to at least, it's probably more of an opinion, but I think it's as close to a fact as I can make it. Um, if. If you want to refer to a committee, that's fine. There's no humanly way possible it's going to come back before April. We're already working on April town meeting right now. Um, there's no way we can put it in between. We have a January town meeting that's about to be called and an April town meeting, and the staff is just extraordinarily busy with other things. So if this is not going to be taken up at this town meeting, that's fine, but you won't see it for a while, just to be clear. <clears throat> Ms. Grinswinger. I move the question. The question uh, has been moved. We, uh, that requires a two-thirds vote. So first thing we'll be voting on is whether or not to end debate on the motion to refer to committee. So if you are in favor of ending debate, please rise. Thirty-one. Nineteen. Nineteen. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Twenty-one. 21. And those opposed to ending debate? Two. Two. Three. Three. One. One. Ten. Ten. 
the vote being 94 in the affirmative, 16 in the negative. The question has been moved. We will now proceed to a vote on um, referring to committee or committing to committee. I'm going to ask for a standing count. All those in favor, please rise. Four. Four. Two. Two. Nine. Nine. Seven. Seven. Those opposed? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Sixteen. Sixteen. And what was Mr. Brown's? Thirty. Thirty. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. The vote being twenty-two in the affirmative, ninety-three in the negative. The motion does not carry. We are back into Section C. Let me just get that recorded. Okay. Uh, for further business under Section C. Ms. Binda. Angela Binda, Precinct 5, is it too late to ask for a move for, to separate? Is, is that an appropriate thing so that we could accept what the work that we have done without losing all of that and vote on the sections that we've already done? Does that need to be done in, in advance? really needs to be done in advance. I'm just trying to think. I'm, I'm not ignoring you. I'm trying to I mean, think there, how would we do it. There is a motion to separate. Yes. So I'm just yeah. wondering if, it, if something like that needs to be done in advance or if it could be done at this point. My problem with it is it, it's a tough thing to separate, but uh, let me just think about this for a second. I may even talk to the town council for a second. I understand your concern, but it does not seem possible at this point. It seems too intertwined. Thank you. Yes. Further discussion? We're still on Section C. Are we ready to move on to Section D? All right, Section D. This is uh, deleting Section 5.0, intensity regulations, and so forth. Mr. Tavoya. Ben Tafoya, Precinct 4. Um, Mr. Moderator, I was wondering if um, I could ask a question of CPDC or the town planner. In my inspection of um, Section 6.3 of the Table of Dimensional Controls, um, there were no changes from the existing Table of Dimensional Controls uh, in the current bylaw? That's correct. Excellent. Thank you. Further discussion? None appearing. Are we ready for Section E? Business under Section E, which is deleting Section 3. Point, excuse me, 6.3 non-conforming uses and structures. Further discussion. None appearing. We will move on to Section F, renumbering Section 6.2 signs. Further discussion. None appearing. We will move on to Section G, renumbering Section 4.4, .4, Floodplain Overlay District, etc. Further discussion? Yes. Dr. 
Tony DeRozzo, Precinct 2, could we go back to Section F for a moment? I think it is what it is, uh, signs. F, okay, what are you, okay. Uh, is, is that Section F? I keep getting confused. Yes, F is renumbering Section 6.2 signs. Now, there were two definitions that I believe were missing, and they were animated sign and electric. Are those put back in? Yes, from what I can see here. And the only other section I had a question on was uh, on the table. One moment. In the table, signs permitted by, according to zoning district, business B zoning districts, you have 17 freestanding uh, service station only is 35, and 18 freestanding is 35D, and I believe in the current bylaw they're actually reversed. Freestanding service station only is 35 with the D, and freestanding alone is 35 by itself. We're looking into this.
are you, it's going to be a while? You want, to, you want to use the microphone, you're going to talk? Now, are we, are we close or what? If not, I am inclined to move on. I'm not getting an answer down there. We, keep moving? Okay, we will, uh, okay. we'll come back to you. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Mr. anything under Section F while we're back into that? Yes, Ms. Binder? Angela Binder, Precinct 5. I got my old numbers and new numbers and letters mixed up. Can I ask a question about accessory apartments? We've, we've passed that, but... Uh, where are we looking? Um, 5473 performance standards for accessory apartments. We back in section D. Was it? I have a question oh. about five four seven three G, um, the parking. And in general, only one access driveway shall be permitted on a lot containing an accessory apartment, unless the board of selectmen has authorized an additional access driveway. Any additional approved driveway space may not result in cars parked in the front yard. Um, most people have cars parked in their front yard. And if you have, say, an apartment you know, on the side of the house, and it would go up. So how is that enforceable? I mean, I, I understand that it might be you thinking of an access driveway to the rear or something. But if, if the selectmen allow a driveway in the front of the house, how, how is it that an additional approved driveway space may not result in cars parking in front yard? Who's gonna stop people from parking in a front yard? I mean, if, you, if you're allowed to build the driveway, who's to say you can actually park in it? How, is, how does that work? Do we have a response, Mr. Meares? Well, as with everything else in the zoning bylaw, it's enforceable by the building inspector. I imagine the building inspector has better things to do than to drive around town looking to see where people's cars are parked. So the only time that this is actually in a practical matter going to um, come up is if somebody is complaining about where cars are being parked. And at that point, he would probably um, do an inspection and, and, um, and maybe issue a violation. I think the point is, just because you've got an extra driveway doesn't mean that you get to park all the way back to the street like you would with your principal driveway. But that's how it would be enforced. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now, where are we? Do we have anything yet down here? Okay, we will, uh, still working? Okay. All right, we're, we were in F, but uh, we have another question. Mr. Donnelly Moran. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Charles Donnelly Moran. I had a question about signs. Uh, and I looked through the bylaws and couldn't find it. What I've noticed uh, occasionally is that at a uh, business, uh, they have parked along uh, the, uh, the main roadway a, uh, you know, like a van with big uh, advertising on it for the business. Uh, and, you know, plus they also have the sign on the building. Point of order. Yeah, please use the microphone. I know you don't have one over there, but it, 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 everybody else needs to hear you. Sorry, point of order, Mr. Moderator. This is only about renumbering. There are no, there's nothing else but renumbering on this, so I'm not sure why we're talking about point these point taken. Items. This is strictly renumbering. This is not any other changes. All right, anything under F beyond the outstanding question? Okay, we will move back into G. Do we have any questions in G? Any discussion? Give you just a second to think about it. None appearing. We will move on to section. Oh, are we ready? <coughs> Mr. Meares. So apparently, the published version of the zoning bylaw is incorrect. What's on the screen is correct. 
works out. Um, that's why they don't match because the what what uh, has been published is uh, leaves out this amendment which occurred last November. So to get that straight, the one that's on the screen is correct. And the, okay. And what was that last comment? Oh, and it was passed out to everyone. Okay. All right. We have just finished Section G. Then uh, anything in Section A? Discussion on the Section A H. Excuse me. Do we have a question, Mr. Dodario? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, Ron Dario, uh, Precinct 6. I would like to make an amendment to that paragraph that was just up on the screen. It's on 12. Right. Where are we looking now? Which right. section are you on? We're not there yet. Oh, okay. That was yeah. on the screen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're in Section H. Any, um, any further discussion? Not appearing. We'll move on to section I. Now you can, yes. Mr. Diderio. Thank you again, Mr. Moderator. Ron Diderio, Precinct 6. Uh, I'd like to make a change, if I could, and to um, take out, uh, to, if any provision of the zoning bylaw shall be found invalid for any reason in a court of competent jurisdiction. And I would like to remove such invalid, such invalid, 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 invalidity, sorry, invalidity <laughs> shall be construed as narrowly as possible. Uh, I would like to take that out. What, what are you asking to Just, take out? Uh, beginning with such. With such, okay. And ending with uh, uh, sort of possible, or, or maybe the, yeah, I'd like to take that out. And then I'll, I'll do it again. Then okay with the balance of the zoning bylaw uh, shall remain in effect uh, so as to secure the purposes thereof. So, so I'd like to take off, um, oh boy, yeah. take off that, I'd like to take out the minimum extent necessary. So I, I would like the bylaw, I would like this to read, if any provision of the zoning bylaw shall be found invalid for any reason in the court of competent jurisdiction, the balance of the zoning law shall remain in effect so as to secure the purposes thereof as set forth in, in section 1.0. And one second. Okay. The reason I'm, I'm okay. saying. Is there a second to that? Second. Mr. Medirio, right. go ahead. Go ahead. The reason I'm mentioning this is uh, I think when we try to narrowly define it and, and what I think can happen is that it can lead to more court cases because we're trying to define it so narrowly so that we, we're not really in line with the spirit of the law, but we're trying to get to the exact letter so that in the event that there's another case that's not precisely the same but would normally fall under that decision, then it becomes contested again. So I think in order not to have that, I think it's best to say it sim a little bit more simply. Um, okay, thank you very much. Mr. Crook. Mr. Moderator, Steve Crook, Precinct 2. Could I have uh, the uh, Town Council's opinion on, on this recommendation? It seems to me that this this weakens our bylaw, but I would like to hear from town council. Mr. Meares? In September, we put in a severability clause in the uh, medical marijuana uh, provision, and it was of this form. 
um, and I told you at that time that we would propose to take it out in November, which we have proposed to do, in favor of a severability clause that was applicable generally. Um, I have written dozens of bylaws, um, and over the years I have crafted this language, I've whittled away at it, I've um, spent a lot of time on it. I think this is the most protective language I have seen in anybody's, whenever I see a severability clause, I look at it and I compare it to what we've done, see if there's any way to improve it. Um, the point here is we want to, if some portion of the bylaw is declared invalid, you want to preserve not only everything else, but the purposes thereof which is why we want to say that the invalidity will be construed as narrowly as possible and that the rest of it will be deemed to be amended to the minimum extent necessary. If you just say the rest of the language stays put, it can alter the purpose of the, of the bylaw. So um, this represents years of, um, of legal honing and um, um, and I think um, this language, I have recommended it to many clients, and I will continue to recommend it. I think you should leave it the way it is. Further discussion? Mr. D'Addario? Uh, thank you again, Mr. Moderator. Uh, first, no, I, I know I'm going to lose on this amendment. I realize that. Uh, so I'm not up here to, to win. But I would like to say that my concern also is that if, if we, something goes to court we, and, and part of the bylaw we find to be uh, not in accordance with state law, so then it comes up again and s somebody has a very close case and probably most reasonable people might feel the law would apply and et cetera, but if you apply it very narrowly, then you find, well, maybe he doesn't apply. And, and my, my thing is that then, okay, it might go to court again, but what happens to most people is if you have to make a decision on going to court, you gotta make a decision on paying for that. And we know you know, legal representation doesn't come cheap. So the result is that I think people would tend to just back off and say, um, I'm not, I'm not going to contest it. I, I feel I'm right, but uh, I'm going to let it go because I don't think I can afford the legal process. So that's what I'm saying in support of the amendment. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes, on the edge. Tom O'Rourke, Precinct 2, uh, I'd say of all the things we have debated, this is uh, best left with town council. I mean, this is kind of, not to sound pejorative, it's kind of boilerplate. Uh, it's not bad boilerplate, but it's every agreement has a sever severability clause, so I think you rely on town council to, to cover you uh, in that case. Mr. So Walsh, did you have a point? Oh, oh I see, okay. Uh, further discussion? Not appearing. Are we ready for the vote on the amendment? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Further business under Section I? Not appearing. Do we have any general comments on the motion under Article 8? Not appearing. Are we ready for the vote? This requires a two-thirds vote. We'll ask for a standing count. All those, oh, excuse me. Oh. We have to take a quick um, recess while they reword the motion. Hold on. I will point out that after we vote this, we do have one instructional motion, which is
We're all set. Okay, this is the motion up on the uh, screen. Okay, is everybody, oh, Mr. Mayers? Just to explain what we did, the motion as originally formulated said, in accordance with the recommendations of the CPDC, and obviously you adopted a bunch of amendments, so wherever you adopted amendments, we just added it as amended at the end, so that, so that the main motion reflects all the amendments that you've uh, approved um, on Monday and again today. Okay, are we set? Okay, it requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of the entire motion, please rise. Thirty. Nineteen. Nineteen. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. And those opposed, please rise. Zero. Zero. One. One. Zero. Zero. Four. Four. The vote being 103 in the affirmative, five in the negative, the motion carries. We now... Uh, uh, Please, please no demonstrations in town meeting. This is a point of order, yes. Thank you. I think it's more of just a request. Uh, in light of the complexity of the revisions, um, I'd ask that uh, town manager makes a document available that we've all been editing to the town meeting member. I think you could probably do that. And then I would also encourage folks, um, in light of the great dialogue that we've had, any other comments? A lot of the sections that we haven't covered to send your comments along to CPDC. I think they could use them and that will help the process move forward. Thank you. Mr. D'Addario moves that we take Article 2 from the table for instructions. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Mr. D'Addario. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ron D'Addario, Precinct 6. I have a very, very brief instructional motion and I'm asking uh, town meeting that town meeting would instruct the town manager and the library director to investigate the possibility of opening the Reading Public Library on Thursday from 9 to 9 from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and on Sunday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Is there a second? Second. Mr. D'Addario? Uh, presently the library on Thursday opens from 1 to 9 p.m and on Sunday from 2 to 5 p.m. So I would be asking that the library open Thursday morning and maybe possibly one hour earlier on Sunday. The reason I'm asking that is, well, first of all, we all know the library has moved to the um, market, new market basket area, and I think we have to really commend the, uh, the librarians. They did a beautiful job. If you haven't been to the new library yet, you're kind of in for a treat. I recommend you go. Uh, with, the, with the new library, of course, naturally, the area is smaller. So my recommendation may be uh, very possible now with the staff they have. It might not even cost anything. Uh, it's possible that uh, with less area, they may be able to cover that morning time. Uh, I would also add that we, did, we took away uh, that morning basically because the town was going through some severe financial stress. We were having to lay off people and all that. And I'm not saying that our financial uh, situation is 100% rosy, but it's a lot better than that. I will also say I, I'm fairly sure that in any Thursday morning, there are, um, I would say, I, I don't know how many people, but I usually go there once a month I can't quite remember that it's been closed. It, it's only been closed for about seven or eight years, and I'm hoping I get that in my head one day. But usually in that 15 minutes I'm there, I count, I, I usually turn away about four or five cars that come up. So, um, and, and, and also I think it'd be a good idea to open it now at that time, because certainly when we get that new library, um, we certainly want that it's costing us quite a bit. 
that we wouldn't want to be closing that library at any time. I think the way the town gets the benefit from the library is to have it open. So I would urge you to vote on this instructional motion that it be investigated that we can open the library at those times. Thank you so much. Further discussion? Mr. Lasher? Uh, Ron, could you just clarify the Sunday hours? I'm not sure I got them. I got 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Thursday. What was Sunday? Okay. So you want one to five year round in theory? Okay. I'm happy to work with them. I will just uh, comment that uh, staffing, you know, staffing is not set up to just drop what they're doing and come in and work on Thursday. So we'll certainly discuss it, though. Further discussion? And appearing, we ready for the vote. All those in favor of the instructional motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. Further business under Article 2. And appearing, further business under this town meeting, Mr. Arena. We have a motion to adjourn the signy die. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by raising a hand. Those opposed, the motion carries. This time meeting stands adjourned. Signy die. <laughs>